Hello, I am Jeronimo Farré, and uh, in this video, Professor Hein Wellens and myself continue discussing the role played by the location of the coronary occlusion in the electrocardiographic manifestations of STEMI. We will explain in this video the very proximal uh, LED obstructions. In this video, we start uh, discussing the ECG of occlusions affecting the left anterior descending coronary artery. This slide shows the basic anatomy of the LED coronary artery. We represent uh, the first uh, septal branch, the first and second diagonal branches, and the wraparound segment of the left anterior descending coronary artery. This wraparound segment may exist or not, and when present, it may have electrocardiographic uh, consequences. The first septal branch usually originates before the first diagonal branch, but there are variations of this pattern. There are also anatomic variations as to the septal circulation itself. Sometimes there is a small proximal septal branch and a second large septal system that is the one supplying blood not only to a significant mass of the septal myocardium but also to the conduction system. We will see examples of this in coming videos. Occlusions of the LAD can be localized at four important levels. First, occlusions that are proximal to both the first septal and the first diagonal branches. Second, occlusions that are distal to the first septal branch, but proximal to the first diagonal branch. Third, occlusions that uh, are localized after a first diagonal branch and before the takeoff of a first septal branch in patients that have a pattern of takeoff of the most proximal branches that is opposite to the one represented in the upper part of the figure. And finally, we have uh, occlusions that are localized distal to both the first septal and the first diagonal branches. In this video, we will explain the electrocardiogram of occlusions proximal to both the first septal and the first diagonal branches. This is an example of a STEMI due to an acute total occlusion of the LED uh, proximal to both the first septal and the first uh, diagonal branches. As you can see, there is an ST segment elevation in leads uh, V1 to uh, B4 and also in the lead A1, in lead AVR and in lead AVL. In addition, we observe an ST segment depression in all the three inferior leads, uh, 2, 3 and ABF, and also in B5 and uh, B6. The ST segment deviation vector in the frontal plane is directed superiorly, whereas in the horizontal plane is directed anteriorly towards uh, V2. The hallmarks to identify uh, this very proximal occlusion of the LED are an ST segment elevation in V1 of 2.5 or more millimeters, an ST segment elevation in lead AVR, and also an ST segment depression in all the three inferior leads, 2, 3, and ABF, and at least in V6, but frequently, like in our example, in both V5 and V6. This is another example of a STEMI due to an acute total occlusion of the LED proximal to both the first septal and the first diagonal branches. The electrocardiogram shows an ST segment elevation in leads V1 to V4 and also 
and ST segment television in Leeds, AVR, AVL and the Lido 1. The ST segment uh, is depressed in Leeds uh, 2, 3 and ABF but also in Lead uh, V6. The coronary arteriography demonstrated that the left anterior descending coronary artery was occluded proximal to both the first septal and the first diagonal branch. Below we show the coronary arteriography after stenting the occlusion of the coronary artery. This electrocardiogram shows another very important uh, sign of proximal LED, LED occlusion, the development of peri-infarction right bundle branch block as a sign of obstruction before the takeoff level of the first septal branch. In this case, the occlusion was proximal to both S1 and uh, D1 and the right bundle branch block disappeared after the percutaneous intervention with stent uh, implantation. The development of this right bundle branch block in relation with an anterior stemi indicates that the site of occlusion is proximal to the most important septal branch that usually is the first septal branch that supplies blood to the intraventricular conduction system. As discussed in Camille videos, S1 can be proximal in relation to the takeoff level of the first diagonal branch, but in other patients the first septal branch originates after a first diagonal branch. Watch uh, more videos on acute coronary syndromes in ECG corner and also read the contents in our portal referring to this very important condition. Thank you very much for your attention.